Hello everyone, welcome you all to another episode in Identity in 15. Today we will be having a discussion on how to extend the WSO2 Identity Server user sessions. First of all, I will introduce myself. I am Rashmini Naran Panava, a software engineer working at WSO2 Identity and Access Management team. In this session, I will first discuss the traditional session extension mechanism and then about the limitations we have with the traditional approach and the solution to overcome those limitations. When a user logs into an application, a session is created and the session creation time is registered as last access time. When the session timeout time elapses, the last access time the session gets expired. When the session is about to expire, the application sends a passive authorization request to re-authenticate the user and updates the last access time. So it will extend the session. This silent request is an OpenID Connect authorized request with the parameter prompt set as none. If it successfully authenticates the user, the application will continue the session without any interruptions. If not, the user will be redirected to the application login page. This request is being sent with the common auth ID cookie which identifies the session that needs to be extended. Most of the time, that passive request is initiated in a third party context so the common auth ID cookie will be a third party cookie. Recently, most of the popular browsers like Firefox and Safari have blocked third-party cookies. So this common auth ID cookie will not be sent with the passive authorization request. Due to that, the identity server will not be able to identify the session and the user will get automatically logged out when the session gets timed out. To overcome this issue, we can use the identity provider session extending API. Here you can see the session extending endpoint URL. This requires either a session identifier as a request parameter or the uh, session identifier cookie. As the session identifier as request parameter, we can use the session key obtained during login. This method is ideal when the common auth ID cookie becomes a third party cookie. The second method where we use a cookie in this endpoint is similar to the traditional approach. It can be used if the cookie is regarded as a first party cookie. The application has to make an AJAX call to this endpoint and passive authorization requests are not required as before. So now let's move into the demo. First, I will show you the traditional approach of session extension using Google Chrome where the third party cookies are not blocked. You can download the WSO2 identity server from WSO2.com and go to products identity server and click on get started. Here you can enter your corporate email and download the latest binary release. There are other installation options available as well like Windows and Mac OS installers. So I already have my identity server running in my local machine. So if I go to the management console, here I can log in to the management console with admin credentials. So once I log in, I can see this service providers or the application section and under list, I can see the applications I have configured. So I have already configured the pickup dispatch sample application. So similar to this, you can also configure your own application or you can configure a sample application. The WSO2 identity server documentation also contains this on how to uh, configure sample applications. So I already have this application running on my Tomcat server. So here I am using Google Chrome to show you the traditional approach where uh, we can use this when the third party cookies are not blocked. 
So I'm logging into my application. Once I log into the application, a session should be created. So when I send a simple GET request to the session's endpoint, I can see the session and the last access time is equal to the login time. Here this time is shown in epoch time. So if you need, you can use a epoch convert converter to convert this epoch time into a human readable format. So as I said before, in the traditional approach, we are sending a passive authorization request to send the uh, to extend the session. So I am using a Restman Chrome extension to send this request. So I am sending the prompt parameter as none and sending the request. So it gives a 200 success response. So if I check this session uh, session last access time again, this should be extended as the third party cookies were not blocked so you can see that uh, last access time have been increased now let's see what happened when the third party cookies are blocked for that i'm using my firefox browser where the third party cookies are blocked so i'm uh, going to log into this application before that i will clear the existing sessions so those sessions will not get cluttered Okay, now I'm going to uh, log into my application using Firefox. Now there should be a session created again. And again the last access time is equal to the login time. Now let's see what happened when I send the, the same passive authorization request. So this returns a 302 response and you can see that there is an error and an error description as well and in the request headers we cannot see the cookie as well. And if I send the, this get request to sessions API again you can see that the last access time has not been extended. This is due to blocking the third party cookies. So the solution is to use the session extending API. path for this is identity slash extend session so similar to uh, passive authentication request we also need to send here a session identifier so uh, in this time we are using uh, the id uh, one of the id token claims so uh, if i go to these claims there is a claim called isk which stands for identity idp session key so i can use this as the uh, IDP session key. So I am sending this request and it returns a 200 response. And here also in request headers we cannot see the cookie. So now once I check the session, this last access time should be increased. So it's 2715 now. It should be increased. Now it's increased than the login time. So uh, this is how to extend sessions without having to rely on cookies. So it is easy to use and implement as well. This is all for today's demo. You can refer to WSO2 Identity Server documentation to get more details on the session extending API. If you have any questions, you can ask them through our community channels. You can raise them in Stack Overflow with the tag WSO2 Identity Server. And also, we have our Discord channel. You can join and raise your questions there as well. Our product team is more than happy to help you. Also, follow our Twitter page, WSO2 IAM Community, to get the latest updates. Thanks all for joining for today's session. Stay tuned for another episode in Identity in 15. Thank you.